Hello, everybody. We got all of just under a dozen people here, and I didn't expect a lot. It was a short notice. But I wanted to go back and address uh, a question that came up in the live stream Saturday night. I started getting tired there. I, I did not intend for uh, to go as long as we did with uh, Leo. I'm glad we did. I'm glad he hung around and answered the questions that came up. But someone had a question specifically about the distribution tools in Lightburn. And admittingly, I said, yeah, I know I use two of them all the time. And two of them, I'm like, I know, but I could. But my brain had already begun to fog over and I, I, I couldn't recall exactly how those worked and why I didn't use them. But I've got all that for you now. I've slept. I've rested. And we're going to not dilly-dally a whole lot. We're going to jump into Lightburn, and we're going to look at those four tools at the top of your uh, toolbar. And if you don't have them, uh, I'll, I, I don't know if that's in the beginner bar or not, but I'll show you where you turn those on, too. Uh, and then I'll take a time and answer some uh, questions that come up dealing with this or anything else. Actually, I'll, I'll, I've got one other thing I'm going to uh, show, too. Uh, so two top two topics tonight: the alignment tools and problematic SVGs and and how you fix them. Uh, so let's see here. We got uh, well, our numbers are, are are more than doubled. So thank you all guys for coming and hanging out here this impromptu live. I like that word impromptu. It's so much more. Even though I'm not in the coat and tie tonight, it's it's more sophisticated than just you know pop up. <laughs> It's an impromptu. Uh, so, uh, in fact, if you're here and you ask about the distribution in the live stream, hold your hand up. I, I can't remember who that was. Um, so we got uh, a few of the regular favorites, and I appreciate you all being here. Like I said, I'm not going to do, go down the roll call. If you're here, you know you are, and if you're not, then shame on you. Uh, but what we're going to look at, let's switch over here. These are the icons that for the tools at the top of Lightburn for the distribution. Now, the, the images in and of themselves are confusing. They don't make any sense to me, except uh, these begin to make a little bit of a sense. But these, the first one and the third one are confusing as all get out. In Lightburn, when you hover over this with your mouse and wait just a second, it will give you a description of what that tool is. But even with the description, it's vague. And if you go to uh, Lightburn's online documentation, it's two sentences. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. And I've looked all over YouTube trying to find someone who's going to do what I'm about to do for you now. And there's none out there, not even from Lightburn. Uh, they don't talk about how these things do what they do when they do what they do. And that's what we're going to do when we do it. <laughs> uh, but if we go over to Lightburn and go up here, I, in fact, in order right now, they're, they're grayed out. In fact, if you don't, in your Windows menu, I have, for my arrange, I have arrange long turned on. So I turn that off. Do those go away? Yeah. So if in Windows, uh, if arrange, uh, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, that's center. So they look, they're there, but they're hidden. They're over here in this drop down menu, and you don't see them unless you have multiple objects on your work bed. So let's do that. Control D, duplicate that, move it over here. And it's got to be th three or more objects. And when you go to use this tool or tools, so I'm putting four objects out here and those are just four squares. Now, when I select those squares, those will are no longer grayed out there. Uh, the option to select them is there. And then you've got a drop down menu here. And it'll tell you distribute V spaced or V centered, but I don't like that menu. I use arrange long and make sure when you turn arrange long on that you turn arrange off because you can have them both open and have duplications up there. But with arrange long turned on, 
Now they're no longer in a drop down menu. You see all of them right there at, at your fingertips and ready to use. Now, with those four pieces on the toolpath, they are no longer grayed out if I, because I have them selected. If I deselect them, now these are grayed out and you can't even get a description of what the tool is. So select your objects. There has to be three or more in order for these tools to work. Then when you hover over it, distribute selected objects vertically on centers. Distribute selected objects vertically with even spacing between them. Distribute objects horizontally on centers and distribute selected objects with even space between them horizontally. Now, if we go back to that image, see that this first one, it's distribute selected objects vertically on centers. And when you look at this image, it has a horizontal line going across the center of the object. This, this rectangles and this small square those are your objects on your toolpath. But here it's got a line going through the center horizontally. But yet that's the tool you use to distribute them, distributed vertical centers. This is uh, even space between them. Now these make a little bit more sense because here's an object and here's an object and it's demonstrating a space between these two but that's a horizontal space and that's for vertical spacing. So that don't make much sense there, except for it's moving this one up and this one down. And this is one of those deals where it's right brain versus left brain. Whoever designed this thinks entirely, entirely different than I do here. It's a vertical line through the center to distribute them on horizontal centers. So to me, those images are counterintuitive. And here it's spacing between two objects and it's horizontal spacing. Again, it's just right brain, left brain. Whoever designed that in their mind's eye and the way they put that together is like, okay, this is how I would visually represent horizontal spacing on vertical centers. To me, I would have had a vertical line for vertical and a vertical line in the center. I would invert those two images for what they represent. And then they would be perfect for me. But some of you may look at them and go, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get what you're saying. I understand that now that you, uh, they look it, but regardless whether or not you like the image, understand the images, how do they work? Because they can be a little, no, they can be quite a bit confusing, especially the distributing on horizontal and vertical centers. Those, the outcomes look like, they're nothing like what you might think they should be, but when we're done here, you're going to understand. All right, so let's go over to Lightburn. All right, right now I have four squares on my work table. And if I had a design, and right now um, I just using four squares because it was quick and easy, but you know any shapes that you've got on there, that you needed to distribute evenly. And you. some people say, well, I could have done that with a, an array tool. Yeah, you could draw out a square. Hold my shift key, draw a square. Actually, I need to get my black path. Well, let's do these on the red. Draw out a square and then do the array tool. And put your spacing at 10 millimeters and space them across. Well, now you've got them perfectly spaced with 10 millimeters between them and you're done. So, okay. Well, that's great. If you know exactly what the spacing needs to be between them. And if you don't know what the exact spacing is, then, then you got to sit down and say, well, how wide is this square? What's my total workspace for those this wide times? And then add those together. And I need three spaces between them. And I want them to be that, add that together, divide it. Or, you know, now I've got, See, you got to do that four letter word, math. And so instead of doing that, when you don't know that it needs to be 10 millimeters, what does the distance need to be? You don't need to go figure all that out. This is what you do instead. If you're designing in Lightburn, you most likely have a toolpath that all of your 
pieces are going to fit on. So I'm going to select my T1 toolpath. And let's say I've got a shape that's this size. It's 300 by 300, which is what I typically design with. And then I might actually come in, <coughs> excuse me, come inward uh, five millimeters because I'm not going to cut right up to the edge of my board and say, okay. Now, I know I want this piece to be right here in that corner. And I want this piece to be right here in that corner. Where do these need to be in order to space those out evenly between them? First thing I need to do is get them all on the same level with each other. So I'm going to select them all and bump them all up, align them to the top. Now that they're aligned to the top, now I can use my distribute with space between them and I need to distribute them horizontally. And that's this one. Distribute selected objects horizontally with even space between them. And now that's going to move those two in between the two end pieces with even space between them. But you have to set your first piece and your second piece, and then it'll position ever how many pieces you got in between there. And if you had control D, you had another one over here and another one here, and they're overlapping with each other. You grab them all, distribute them. It's going to move them out and put them where they need to be. So that is distribute them horizontal with space in between them. Vertical works the same way, except you're doing it vertically. Those I use all the time, and they're really, really simple. And go back over here. And so if I had, uh, for whatever reason, I said, okay, uh, I didn't want to just say Control D, uh, duplicate that, and then rotate it and bring it down here, and then you go, okay, well, that, that works. You got one overlapping up there. Instead of doing that, let's say I only wanted to have three rows horizontally. So I'd put that one in the corner, and then it's like, okay, well, where's that one need to be over here? It's kind of right there. But actually, you know, you could find your center point there and then scroll up and down and find your center point, and there, lock, lock in right there. That should be it, actually. But let's say you wanted four of them instead of three. Now you wanted four. Now you don't have that node that you could snap onto. So you would grab those four, align them to the left of each other, and then distribute them evenly vertically with spaces between them. And now those are all set out. Those are pretty easy, right? You understand that? Everybody nodding your head? Any questions? Anybody got any questions on that one? And Dale, I'm I'm glad. No, it was midnight that asked that question. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Does anybody have any questions on distribute evenly, or horizontally or vertically with even space between them? Those are simple. Those are easy to use and they're practical to use. They come in very, very handy. Taking my drink. All right. So no questions. And I didn't expect any. Those are real simple. These other two, they're not quite. Once you understand them, you can you can well, you can understand them, but they I haven't found much practicality in them for the from my designs and how I design. But you might. Um, uh, so let's jump back over here. And right now I'm working with, uh, perfect squares. And in fact, I'll keep those four. Let's get rid of these. And I'm going to position these randomly. Like so. All right. Now, if I grab all of these and I come up here to this option, distribute selected objects vertically on centers. Um, the description 
is even a little bit confusing on what the outcome you get until you fully understand how it does. I click on it. You've seen the two inner ones move. Undo and redo. So that's what happens when I applied it. And those are distributed vertically on centers. Do you see anything that looks like it's distributed on centers? Uh, it's kind of tough to see, but that's exactly what it is. They are distributed vertically based on the center of that size or that object. And what I did when I created these, I put a dot in the very center of these squares and put it on a toolpath and hit it. So you haven't seen it, but now I'm gonna turn those back on. So if I turn that toolpath on, now you can see these dots are here in the center of each one of those squares. And if I was to draw a rectangle from the center right there of that and come down to the center of that one, That centered, and then if you look now, that if I put that right in the center, that centered to center there, and it's the same thing here from center to here. These, if I, this is further apart, but the height, and now if I if I put that right in the center there, and then I'll, if I stretch that out till it's in the center, see there. I don't know what you're going to use that for. Don't know where it would come in handy because here is the other issue with it because it is, as Jeff says, it's center of the object versus from the edge of the object. Problem with that is, is you know, they're, they're not, they're not on their centers uh, <coughs> in a column and here they are all the same size. Now let's, and, and it does the same thing if we do it. That was vertical. If we do the same thing horizontal. It's going to do the same, same, same outcome. It's from center of the object to center of the object. What happens when you got different size objects? If I take this and I'm going to ungroup this, and now I'm going to take that square and I'm going to make that square a whole lot bigger, and I'll group it back. And this one, I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to take this square, oops, take this square, and I'm going to make it a whole lot smaller and group that back. What do y'all think is going to happen? Yep, Jeff is distributing them versus aligning them. But by changing the size of those there, and I select them all, What's going to happen whenever I tell it to distribute them? Anybody? Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding, ding dong, ding dong, ding, ding 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 dong. Nobody got a guess. Absolutely nothing. Well, I take that back. I didn't have that grouped. Uh, go back to that. Center, ah, oh, come on, undo it is what I need to do. Undo. There we go. Now group those. Now, all of those are grouped again. I made this square much bigger and made this square much, much smaller, but I didn't move them. And since I didn't move them, nothing happens. Because the center stayed exactly in the same place. The square got much bigger and much smaller, but the center of that object never moved. And since they're uh, distributed vertically on centers, nothing moved as far as their positioning. The size, I changed it, but their, their physical placement doesn't change at all. Now, here's where, it, where size does matter. If you got something like this and you take this little bitty one, you put it up here 
and we take those and let's you know what let's bring bring this one in a little bit tighter and i select all of these now what's going to happen when we same same tool distribute evenly vertically on centers you got overlap because in order to get the same distance from the center of this circle to this circle, the squares had to overlap each other to get all the distances equal between all four pieces. And again, that works the same way on the horizontal. So the difference between those tools one is giving you even spaces between them, as uh, was Jeff said it, Jeff? Yep. Even spaces between them from edge to edge. You have to set your outermost pieces. And I was doing it when uh, aligning them just to, to, so it was easier to see. It doesn't have to be lined up. If I take these pieces and actually, you know what, we'll get rid of these two guys, delete them, bring this one up here, bring this one over here, and bring that one. And actually, you know what? I'll bring it down here somewhere. So I've set my anchor point for the where I want the, the end of that row to be, and this is where the other end of that row is at. If I select them all and tell it to distribute horizontally with even spaces between them, it put the space from edge to edge equal on all four pieces, but she kept their position on the X. It did not move them. It only changed them to have equal spaces between them. And then if I were with that same selection now, and I did the here, even spaces between them uh, vertically. Now they're, going to be the same distance from the from the edge to edge on each of those it's uh even spaces between edge and edge horizontally and vertically i use it all the time but those other two i i've never used them i figured that out a long time ago but it meant so long since i've ever needed to remember that or because i don't use it don't know why you would use it um I've asked others and they said, yeah, there's times when, when they were making tables that they might would do it or, but I, I don't see any need for that. Uh, well, Steve, if you're late, you just need to turn around and go home. I mean, you are home, aren't you? <laughs> uh, so that's a, a quick summary uh, or summarization of those four tools. Uh, again, the, the space between them, horizontally and vertically, I use it all the time. Very, very helpful when I want to create a symmetrical looking piece. Uh, they do not have to be aligned on the same X or Y axis to create the same spacing between them. Uh, but that's the difference. Edge to edge versus center to center. All right. Now. Uh, I want to go over one other quick thing, and then we're going to make this one a short one. Um, I had an email from, who was this from? Let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. That one, yep, and that one, and uh, no, no, Lyle, okay. So Lyle sent me an email. Lyle Brown sent me. Is Lyle here today? Is he here yet? I told him I was going to go over it in the next live. So Lyle, this is, I've already sent him the corrected SVG. I've already sent him the fix for this problem. But I told him, instead of just fixing it and sending it to him, I wanted to demonstrate to him what his problem was and how I fixed it and what you should look for. And I want to do that, not just for him, but for anybody here that's watching, Lyle had acquired a file. I don't know where it came from. It looked like it was not designed in Lightburn because there were a lot of issues trying to use it in Lightburn. Uh, and he was trying to resize slots and tabs. And it's four pieces. And one of the pieces, 
just wasn't cooperating. So I said, send me the file. Let me look at it. And I did. And immediately seen the problem. And I'm going to show you guys. And some of you are going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, there's the problem. But some of you are going to go, oh, really? That's an issue? So uh, let's see here. Let me scroll down. All right. Uh, I want to go to Lightburn. And I need to import this file from the downloads. Uh, nope. I need to download it first. All right. I did this on my laptop yesterday. Uh, so here and here and download. Oh, no, I don't. It, and this is how I also know it wasn't a light burn. It's not a light burn file. It's an SVG that he sent me. Um, so if I go to that, come on, computers, computers, downloads, open. And now let's see here. File save as, and again, I I decided to do this at the last second. File. <laughs> Light burn. No, stupid. Hit the wrong button and Teams is one open. All right, import. Downloads, no. This is a, I, I really do not care for SVGs. Go away, go away. And I save all my files and make them available to you guys with, with SVGs. All right, downloads. Open, open, open. Come on now. Why is it not letting me do this? I know why. Because we're live. That's why. Okay. Uh, There we go. Desktop. Save. All right. Now I've got it on my desktop. Now I can bring it into Lightburn. Again, sorry about that. We were brain fart. All right. Import. Desktop. The SVG. No, 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 no. No. Laser cut. Laser. I put it on the desktop and it's not there. Y'all talk amongst yourselves for a second, because I, I, this is this is going to be good when I get it opened up. Ah. There we go. Save as. And why is it not there? Save as. Save as an SVG. And we're going to do uh, LB test. We want to rename it. Save. Save. Oh. It ain't me. 
when I look at after I tell it to save it, it says it could not download network issue. All right. Uh, I use another way to skin a cat. I've got it right here. And I'll email it to myself instead of having to download it. Because I said I did this from the uh, laptop last night. All right. Now. I'm on. Done, done. Done. Save as. And that'll work. Send the downloads, test LB, save, email. More than one way to skin a cat, just in like a light burner. There's always more than one way to do something. All right. And compose, send it to myself. And I don't know why I'm having network issues unless it has something to do with me streaming right now. Don't know. I've never tried to do that before. Attach. Downloads. LB test. Test. There we go. Test. Open. And send. Yes, I know it doesn't have a body. There, that's it. Now, sh there we go. I got an email alert. Do, 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 do. Inbox. There we go. Download. Done. Okay, now, import. Downloads. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right. Over to Lightburn. So this is a very, very simple file that he sent me. And right now, there are things that are grouped together. And I can tell that because if you look right here, when everything's selected, Instead of having just a dot, 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 it's like a Morse code. You've got dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash. When you see that, that means that those are grouped. When I hit the ungroup button, now you can see it all turns to dashes. Also, you could have told that, that by looking up here and the ungroup was an option. But at first glance, when you look at it, if you see dot, uh, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, things are grouped together. Now, when you go here, let's see here, let's look at what size these slots are. They are four millimeter slots. When he selected it and went to the resize slots and selection, old material thickness, four millimeters. I'm going to go to new uh, three millimeter new material, give it a, a tolerance of half a millimeter and slot width. It sees the slots, but the tabs, it's not seeing these tabs. <clears throat> and there are a lot of other issues with what's going on down here. And But this was his problem. He's like, I can't get these to resize. What's going on? Well, there's a lot going on. If I put this on a black toolpath instead of the red one. If I... In fact, I'm going to grab these and these and move, just move this out of the way for right now. If you look at this close, I don't know how well you can see it on your screen, but even for anything selected, you can see this is really, really dark. This is really dark. That's an indication there are multiple pieces on top of each other. This is all in a line mode, so nothing's filled, 
but there are, there we go, we'll zoom in tight. There are multiple pieces here. You got to zoom in really, really tight to see them. But whenever you select the entire thing, you can see the dashes here and here, but then there the dashes go away because there's so many dashes from all the different lines that it start to begin to look like a solid object. But it's not, it's just multiple pieces. So first thing I got to do is eliminate all the duplications. You say you select one and hit the delete button. Select it again, hit the delete button. Select it again. Now it's selected a whole lot more than just that one piece out there. So in fact, if I look now, see now you can see it's selecting these dashes or these dashes are part of what's selected. And I don't want to delete that because that's indicating there's only one piece there. So let's go in here even tighter and grab the one that's inside there. And that one on the inside looks like that's the one, so we don't want that. Let's grab it on the outside where I can see the outside. There we go. Grab that, <clears throat> scroll out, nope, that's the same one. All right, so now since that's not one, that's one I don't wanna get rid of, I'm gonna put that on a toolpath and then turn the toolpath off. Now I can grab this. I don't want that. Delete. Turn the toolpath back on. And now I can see that toolpath goes from there to there. Put it back on the black path. I got to select it. I'm on. Back on the black path. But now there's all these others here that this this that's one piece that's one piece and that's one piece <clears throat> so the outer perimeter now i've got it down to one layer all of these in here it looks like these are all singular pieces so if i grab each of them yep those are all singular pieces so those are good but these not only are they multiple layers but there are a ton of open shapes there's one shape there's one shape. There's one shape. Now, this is irrelevant when it comes to doing the resizing slots and tabs. In fact, I'll show you. I can take, because now that I've cleaned up that outer perimeter that consists of those tabs, if I select, holding now holding my shift button, select each of these pieces until I've selected that entire perimeter. Now that I've got all those selected, Alt-J will join that all together. And I see down here at the bottom, that's one piece. And if I go to my tools and resize slots and selection, I want four millimeters, old material, or old materials four, new materials three. I got a half millimeter tolerance. And I'm going to change my tab height. It still didn't do it because right here, shapes that are not closed. It joined those together, but it's still an open shape somewhere. So where is that open? That is all, uh, and the one one quick way to see if a shape is open, obviously, whenever you click on it, if you find a point where the ants are running into each other instead of in a constant motion, where they come to a point, that's usually an open shape. But instead of spending five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 seconds looking for the open shape, first thing I do is do a zero offset of that and delete the original, and most of the time, that solves the issue. So we're going to try that right here, right now. So I've got that entire piece selected. Go to my offset tool, do a zero offset. Doesn't matter if you go inward or outward, because we're doing a zero offset, and we're going to tell it to delete the original objects and say, okay. And now, just to see if it's an open shape or not, come up here to edit. And right there, closed path is still an option. So that didn't work. So try closing path. Did that work? Nope, that didn't work. So where is my open shapes at? Go to my node editing. Now, when I go to my node editing, I've got only one origin node. It's right here. There it is. Well, I don't know if that's it or not. It looks like there's connected, but those don't come to a point. So I'm going to select just that node right there 
and hit the letter D. Uh, that just changed the shape of it. All right, undo that. I'm going to bring that node. Actually, I'll bring that node to right here for right now. And I'm just going to grab my origin node and see if it's open. It's not open there. So undo. And I'm going to bring that down here. So it doesn't have an oddball cutting. I am confused, boys and girls, as to why that is still open. Because those two things typically, all right, edit. Oh, there it is. That was. It's no longer open path. So one of those was causing the issue. But that's the next thing I was going to say. When, a, when you do a zero offset and delete the original, if that doesn't do it, go to your node editing. <clears throat> Go look for your origin node, which is going to be the uh, a large green. And, and if it's if it's two pieces, you'll have two origin points, two origin nodes, and that would be like okay, well, there's a problem because you, you'd only have one. But if you've only got the one, then that origin node is typically where it's open, and it was. I just didn't see it. But whenever I moved it, it must have locked them together. Why didn't it do it? Whenever I told it to close path, I don't know. Sometimes Lightburn has a mind of its own. But now if I look at this and I go to resize slots and selection, four millimeters, I'm going to go to three and I change my tab height. Now my tabs are moving. So I fixed that problem of the SVG. But all those inner pieces have still got multiple pieces on them. And, if, and this is going to be something he's going to cut out. It's going to be a T light. And with all those multiple lines on top of each other, it's going to want to cut that line four times. Well, that doesn't work well when you're trying to send a job to the laser. All those multiple pieces need to go away. And this, this particular design is actually just made up of these ovals right here and this shape and this, well, We've got to select the whole thing, that shape and that shape. Uh, those two pieces make up that entire design. The rest of it's irrelevant. So I need to fix two pieces. And that's what I had to do. I started coming down here and I started eliminating the duplications. So select one. Well, that got rid of more than I wanted. So undo, undo that, select that, delete, select that. And that got more than what I wanted. Go to node editing. Oh, you know why? I remember now. Because these have multiple pieces on. And this is when, and I'm showing you guys this because when you get problems from Etsy, when you get problems from anywhere else, SVG files that you download uh, that were created in Adobe Illustrator or anywhere else, you can have all kinds of nightmarish issues because of things like what we're experiencing here. That is showing as a line. And it's showing as a duplicate line, or at least it, it looked like it was a duplicate line because it's not just one steady line of ants. But actually what that is, is three shapes that are rectangular and closed and then come to a point and so that would be really kind of funky cutting out. So now when I come in here to node editing and start moving these nodes around, you're going to see that that is actually a solid shape. And what I have to do is break that, delete it, or I could actually just copy it, a new, new piece out, which would be faster. But I want to show you what these problems are. Uh, and then you begin to understand why a lot of these files you get are more work, more trouble than they're worth. But let's go back over here and you'll start to see what I'm talking about. So I've got that piece selected and it looks like there's only two nodes, one here and one here. But if I grab that node and move it out, well, that one moved. But I grab this one and move this one out. That one move. Now I'm going to hit the letter B for break. Now that I hit the letter B for break, look there. There was it was actually a it was so close together 
that that hit to come up here and highlight that one hit the letter b for break now that's separate and now i can bring that back to where it was and bring this one down to where it was and select this one and delete it this one's going to be the same way so i'm going to come over here and before i move it i'm just going to hit the letter b for break now i've broke that apart come over here hit the letter b for break that one's the one I want to keep, so I'm going to grab this one and pull it down here. Grab that, bring it over here. And now that just joined itself together, and that's one piece. I can select that and delete it. This one's made up the same way. It's got a whole bunch of small, itty-bitty, rectangular closed pieces bent into this shape. So... Instead of doing what I did there, I could go into each one, break each end node, drag down, drag down the piece I don't want, delete it, then weld it all back together. Uh, Jeff, uh, no, it's not because they were crossing. It's because it's actually uh, a, it's, it. It's so small you can't see it, but it's actually a small rectangular. It's actually four pieces, but you can't see them or break those nodes apart because they're on top of each other. You actually have to hit the break in order to get that to come apart or something. Uh, question here, would the delete duplicate tool? Uh, it, it would, if, and, and I guess if you set your tolerance level for your spacing in your duplications, that, that might would work. But I don't like having messy files. None of the files you ever get from Hobo with Wood will ever have anything like this on it. Uh, and... You know, what, keep it simple, stupid. And another way that you can do this instead of breaking all of these out. Uh, and Jeff was, no, that comment was for the tab resizing where it was joined, but it crossed itself. Yeah, that might have been the issue, but it still said it was said it was an open shape. And only one of the tabs had the crossing issue and it still didn't recognize the bottom tab. So it was still an open shape, and it had to be open there at the origin because it was only the one origin. Uh, all right, so here, and, and plus what I'm doing, I get this a lot. I, I, I get emailed several times a week with people having, with files like this, and like, man, it just ain't working. This just ain't working. <clears throat> and I am more than happy to help. Um straighten out issues and help issues and help educate. And like here, I, I already fixed this and he already has it and he's already made them, but I want him to see what's going on, what, what has to, had to be done to fix it. And also, so when it happens again, he'll know it when he sees it and I, either how to fix it himself or what to be aware of and what he don't want to mess with. Kurt says, if you select the line with... If you select a line with a crossing window with the count at the bottom of the screen, show you, I, I, it will, but I think it's only just one object. Uh, let's see here. Right now. Go back to my selector. Yeah, so you don't see all the ants chasing each other steadily. And if I zoom in, it's that's as tight as I can go. I can't go any tighter. And if you look down here, it says it's one object. And it's because it's not a line. Uh, if, if, if I put it in fill mode, that, that ain't going to help us any there. Line. It's not just one line. Uh, if I go back to that and go back to node editing and come over there and hover over that node and hit the letter B, come over to this node, hover over it and hit the letter B. Now when I move that, See, there it is, and there it is. So it's not, it's they were so close to each other that you could not differentiate them in Lightburn at all. But and and they were they were it was connected and it was one solid object. So delete that, delete that one. And now when you look at that, you can see just one line of ants chasing each other. But how many are like that? There's there was one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. Nine different pieces on here that you would have to go in and edit and do that with. Uh, so instead of doing that, I'm going to come in here to node editing, or actually to my line tool. And I'm going to come right here. And I'll just start drawing out a line from there to there. Come up here, here. And I'm just tracing over this. And I'm actually going to have a sharper, cleaner image when I'm done because I'm giving it just corners and no curves. And right click to quit. Get my selector tool. That is the one I just drew. I'm going to put it on my red tool path temporarily. Turn off the red tool path and now select that entire piece. Hit my delete button, delete button, turn my red path back on. Select that, put it on my black layer. <coughs> Connect the nodes. I've got two two origins here. I've got one here and one here. So it's still set, still not wasn't closed. Those didn't snap. Once they snap together, one of those will disappear. And it's just not wanting to do it. So I'm gonna try Alt J. Nope. There's a, oh, I didn't get rid of one of them. One of them didn't go away. So put that back on the red toolpath. That's weird. I didn't. I've got a duplication here somewhere. All right, go to node editing. Yeah, I don't know why. That's, I don't know why that didn't delete a minute ago. All right, break. And now join those. Delete that. Now I've got that one piece. And I got this one piece. I'm going to group those. And I'm going to get rid of all this other stuff. Uh, didn't mean to get rid of those middle ones. We'll keep those. Now I can select that. Select that. Go to my circular array and tell it I want six copies. Say okay. And now that problems, all those problems are gone. I only had to fix two of those pieces. And now that's something that is ready to cut out and will cut out cleanly. Uh, and would a zero degree offset work? Uh, I didn't try it on there. Uh, actually, you know what? I did try it on there. Whenever he first sent me the file, because that's the first thing I do. Very... When I have problematic issues, problem files, first thing I try to do, zero offset to delete any of the problems. That should be your first go-to for problematic files. But because that one was closed shapes, it looked like lines because they were so close together, but they were closed shapes and we did a zero offset. It was just, it, it put another one right back on top of it. It didn't delete. But the zero offset will delete problems uh, as far as open shapes, when there's an open shape, a lot of times a zero offset will close the shape. All right. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I, I'm, I think I want some pie too. <laughs> uh, in fact, I got a key lime pie in the refrigerator. I think I'm gonna go get a slice of that. 
Uh, so these are some of the roadblocks and headaches to look for when you bring files in and different ways to think about going about finding the problems, how to fix the problems, especially if you got a file like that where there was six pieces. Was there six pieces? It was one, two, three, four, five. Actually, it's six pairs. So there was 12 pieces that all had problems. And instead of repairing all 12 of those, identifying that, okay, these two are the same repeated, fix two of them, delete the rest of them, and replicate them with problem solved. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, Moses. Thank you. No, that was not necessary, not, not required, but greatly appreciated. Moses did the super sticker $20. And somebody sent me a nasty comment the other day. And I got a few trolls since January. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't usually give them the time of day, but, and I just delete them. But somebody sent me a, an email. Uh, I got my RC right here. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and 20 a piece. That'll, that'll do me a month. I'll buy 20 of these. Uh, but the other night, you guys all blessed me with a bunch of different and uh, super thanks. And those are never required, never expected, and always surprising. But there were some that were very, very generous. And it, it caught me unaware and caught me off guard. And I used to be. One of the biggest antagonist, ready to fight, argue with a stop sign, want to wrestle with a telephone pole, fight with anybody, anything and everything. And I would argue with you just to be arguing with you. I wouldn't care if I thought you was right or not. I'd argue with you just to have an argument. But since my strokes, I have got, different outlook on things. But beyond that, it's both a curse and a blessing. My emotions are just barely skin deep. I'll get choked up at a stupid commercial. Uh, a really good movie will get me choked up in a minute. But the other night, y'all surprised me with all that. And it did catch me un uh, unaware. And I was, in, I was obviously set back and stupid... Well, won't you quit showing, quit you acting, quit you acting, quit pretending, quit. The... I am what I am. I am what I am. And I ain't no act going on here. I'm 100% genuine. I'm 100% me. And, uh, you know, everything you see is original. All of my ideas are original. If somebody feels like, well, you stole my project. I didn't steal your project. Maybe you've got something that's similar to what I designed, but I didn't didn't take yours and remarket it. So thank you for everybody. Thank you for all of you guys hanging in here. And uh, I I just I wanted to address those. And if you tuned in late, you need to go back and watch this because in the first few minutes, I went over those distribution tools at the top of Lightburn. And those are really handy. Two of them are really tough to see how they work but once you see understand what they're doing when they do what they do you'll 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 get it and you'll probably still only use two of the four but uh, go back and watch the beginning of this for sure so uh thank you for being here thank you for this imprompt for tuning hanging out in this impromptu live and uh we probably do some more of that this i'm i'm getting really beginning to hate recording and editing and recording and editing so we may be doing more of this i don't know Thank you. I'm going to get out of here. We're going to hit the end stream button and wait for it to end.